Hi everyone. We come to the last of our Easter reflections this year. Really hope you've enjoyed them. If you've missed any of them, you can, they are available on the Metahead Christian Fellowship Facebook page or on our Metahead Christian Fellowship YouTube channel. So please look them up. Thanks for everyone who's taken part this year from the church, a different group than we had at Christmas and last Easter in many, in many cases. We really appreciate your involvement. We're going to finish with a passage, a well-known passage from Matthew 28. I'm just reading from verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Amen. Today, the challenge, I suppose, is how, as Christians, we should respond to this Easter message. It's clear we're not meant to keep this story to ourselves. Jesus left his disciples with this clear command to go everywhere and to share this good news, challenging the people we meet to respond and to obey God and promising that he would be with us as we did this forever. You see, the message of Easter is one of hope for all mankind. It's the hope of a fresh start, the hope of a new beginning and the hope of new life. It's a reminder also that God doesn't give up on us. You see, on Good Friday, the disciples truly thought it is finished. Game over. I suppose to quote Kenneth Wollstoneholm when he was commentating on the 1966 World Cup final, they think it's all over. Their dreams and their hopes seem to have died with Jesus. They doubted everything they'd ever believed about him and about their future. They were dispirited. They were disillusioned. They were scared to death about what would happen to them and locked away as a result from everyone and everything. Their reason for living had died, and some were in despair, and the disgrace and shame of Peter meant something had died within him and killed off any thoughts of his future ministry uh, for Jesus and with Jesus. And so if Jesus had remained in the tomb, I suppose that would be the end. Let's be honest, a dead man can't save anyone or anything. And as Paul writes to the Corinthian church, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching's useless and so is your faith. But the story of Easter is of a Jesus who is resurrected from the dead and who brings life, who revives the hope and the purpose and the mission of these dispirited disciples as he breathes life into their brokenness in that upper room when he appeared among them. And as each of them in the, in, the, in the Easter narrative encounters the risen Jesus, uh, that which had been dead within them starts to come alive again. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Just as Jesus met those first disciples, he can and does meet us also in our doubts, in our failures and disgrace, in our despair, in our disillusionment. And that's the good news for every one of us. God's grace comes to us in our messed up state and tells us this is not the end for us. Things have not died. (laughs) Our dream has not died. This is not the end of our, our ministry or our service of God, however bad things seem. So what really holds us back from sharing this good news of Easter? Is it fear? Is it a sense of feeling unworthy? You know, if we truly and deeply believe the Easter message, it will motivate us to share a life-giving and life-changing message of hope and life. The only way that death is swallowed up in victory is in our Lord Jesus Christ. I finish with the words from um, 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul writes, having talked about Jesus' great resurrection at the end of that chapter, therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you and always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know your labour in the Lord is not in vain. Easter is alive in us as the church. We need to share the good news of it with those who live around us. God bless you. Let's pray as we close. 
Father, we pray that this Easter, the life of Christ would come to us. We open ourselves up to you. We open our fears. We open our disappointments. We open our sense of um, disillusionment about things not going right in our lives to you and say, Lord, meet us. Meet us in our need. Meet us in our desperation. Meet us in our loss. Meet us in, in the death of things that we believed and hoped in, which seem to have been dashed. Bring your life, breathe your life into us. Give us a fresh revelation of, of the truth of who you are, the risen Lord, the one who has conquered death. And Lord, may we go into this world with the confidence of knowing that you go with us forever and that we go with a message of hope and life that brings real change to people. God bless you.